There's this photo of New York City right around the turn of the century, 1900. It's Fifth Avenue, and on the street are nothing but horses and horse-driven carriages. Then, in a few years, 13 years, that same photo, and it's nothing but cars. In 13 years, New York City, and probably most of the world, or at least most of the US, changed from being horse-driven carriages to cars. And I think that's the same radical shift, the change that's gonna happen with autonomous cars. Hi, my name is Levi Spires. This is the Tip You in the App Daily Drive Podcast. In this episode, I'll go over all seven reasons why I think that this change will happen, that it's it's good. Um, it's a little scary, but it's good, and there's some benefits to it. And then I'll go over the one thing that I think about and why I don't want it to happen. Now, let's just kind of clearly describe what this world is. It's going to be like autonomous Ubers or Lyfts or whatever, always available. If you need a car, you just go on your phone, dial it up, and the car takes you where you need to go. And that includes uses too. So you could have like, there's seven of us, so you order a larger vehicle. Or, you know, I'm not in a hurry, so I'm going to order a bus. And that bus will be, you will be added to that bus's route. And the artificial intelligence algorithm will find a way to make sure that everybody on that bus gets to where they need to be efficiently. Or, you know what, I'm going to, I need a lot of dirt hauled. So you're going to go on your phone and order a truck with the truck bed or something like that. And who knows what these cars are going to look like. They could look like what we have today. They could look very futuristic. There's a lot of options that are out there. Some of the other things that I think about will be streets right now are designed for humans to use our eyes to drive and make decisions like with street lines and signs and uh, speed limits and there'll be lights that's today but in a world of autonomous cars the autonomous cars will will know the streets they'll know all the things around them and they'll be connected and so they'll coordinate better and so let's kind of go through all seven of those things and what i think the benefits are the first and obvious benefit is safety (laughs) i know you're a good driver but you've driven on the roads and being in a car is an extremely unsafe thing because humans make really bad decisions. Not only like driving drunk or driving tired or something like that, but just like, I think I can make that turn. Your, your judgment is impaired for whatever reason. Maybe you can't see the car coming at you as clearly as like an autonomous car can see it. So you, yeah, we make bad decisions. We speed. We're like, I can go a little bit faster. Or you don't keep your car in good repair. So your tires are not inflated properly. Whatever it is, autonomous cars won't do that. And they're much safer. At the end of the day, they're safer for everybody in the car, the other cars around you, for pedestrians, bicyclists, whoever. Autonomous cars are safer. It's not, it doesn't make me feel good to say that out loud, but it's the truth. It's honest truth. Autonomous cars will be safer. The second thing is time. We'll get our time back as humans, or at least Americans. We spend so much time driving our cars and it's fun. I'm not saying driving a car is this horrible burden. Maybe in traffic it is or something like that, or driving to Walmart is or something like that. But yeah, driving a car consumes a lot of our mental capacity and, and time because we're having to focus on driving, the speed control, looking around and all this kind of stuff. What I've noticed driving a Tesla and when I put the car in full self-drive, my stress level really drops because now I'm being driven. And let me give you this example. Billionaires, people that fly in in private jets or whatever. I, I always see this picture of like a private jet lands and what if there's like a couple of Cadillac Escalades sitting there waiting and the billionaire person gets off the plane and they get in the back seat of a Cadillac Escalade and they get driven somewhere. That's luxury because they don't have to, they can get in the back seat of that Cadillac, look out the window. They could draw, they can play on their phone, they can watch a movie, they can work, they can have a conversation with the person next to them and not have to worry about driving. It's a real luxury to get your time back. And that's they're not exclusive to that. In America, because we have 
bad mass transit and buses and stuff like that, like here in Syracuse, if you're working hard and, but you don't have enough money for a vehicle, for whatever reason, you don't have a car, a lot of people still order Ubers. So low income people are having that same experience. They don't pay, make a car payment. They don't have to make insurance payments. They don't have to maintain a car, park a car, put fuel in a car, worry about their car on the city street. They just, when they're ready to go to work, they go into their phone, dial up a $10, $15 Uber, $20 maybe, and they go to work and then they come home. And we can say that's expensive relative to our car, but they get their time because they get the car when they need it. And it's the maintenance of that vehicle, that care of that vehicle, whatever, it doesn't matter to them. And they get in the backseat of that car and I hear them, they're on the phone with their friend or they're playing a game or they're getting ready for work or whatever it is. They're sleeping. It doesn't matter. They get driven around the same way a billionaire does. The same way that almost I do on Tesla FSD. Where today, I still have to pay attention to the road, and but soon, I'm just going to hit a button and I'm going to lay back and that car is going to take me wherever I need to go. The third thing is cost. Okay. Right now, because humans are driving cars and we're maintaining them and we're using cars as part of our cultural identity, our cars are very expensive. Um, because humans are driving cars, we make bad decisions. The insurance costs are really a lot right now. <laughs> They're so high because we wreck. But autonomous cars in the future, not today, but in the future, they just won't have those same safety concerns. So insurance costs will decline. And also, because it's not my car, I don't care what style of car it is. So the cars will continue to get cheaper because the styling of the vehicle is not an identity of who I am. It's just the back seat. I just need a place to sit. Now we can talk about comfort and those things, but it's still not an identity factor of who I am. So cars will get cheaper. They'll be more efficient. They'll be better maintained because fleets will own them and they'll want to get the most value out of that particular car. So autonomous cars where you order a car instead of owning a car, it'll be cheaper for you and me. Mobility is a big issue, the fourth reason why. Today, we were talking about low-income people in America struggling with buses. If they can't get a car, how difficult it is just to get to and from work if you don't own a car. If you don't have a car in America, it's really, really hard to get around. I mean, there are certain cities like New York that have a train system. Maybe your city has an okay bus system. But for the most part, if you don't own a car, or you can't drive a car for whatever reason, it's a pain in the butt to get around. But in the future, they won't be. So imagine you're in your 80s or 90s, and you're not near family, but for whatever reason, the your licenses have been revoked, you're too old to drive or whatever it might be. Well, yeah, we don't want unsafe people with bad reflexes or slow reflexes out there driving heavy vehicles at 70 miles an hour, <laughs> but we can have cars that are autonomously driven doing that for that group of people, whoever they might be, or I'm using the elderly, but it doesn't matter. But everybody will have equal access to door to door mobility in the future. If all cars are autonomous and affordable. The fifth thing that is really, really interesting to me is land. Go look outside your window, whatever, and look how much land is being used to park vehicles, just park them, parking lots, go to a grocery store, look outside on the curb or the street, uh, your driveway, everything is about parking a vehicle because vehicles are just really not being used that much. We'll spend 30, 40, $50,000 on a vehicle. We'll spend $500 a month or whatever to, or thousand dollars a month on that car. And 90 plus percent of the time it's sitting there parked. You're not driving it. It's a depreciating asset. Well, in the future, if all cars are autonomous, the goal is to keep them in motion, be as efficient as possible. And that is what's going to happen. So parking lots, parking garages, curbside parking, all of it will go away and cities will reclaim that land. It could be the grocery store could expand its operations. Um, that could be turned into a parking lot. There's a lot of options. And even the city streets will just look better because there won't be cars parked along them blocking pedestrian views of things. It's a real exciting opportunity just to reclaim land from parked vehicles. Electric cars are cleaner. That's the sixth benefit to it. Now, 
maybe not all cars in the future will be autonomous, will be electric. I don't know. But today, if you were to look at an electric car versus a gas car, there's two parts to that pollution that we need to talk about. Pollution number one that a car gives off is gas or smog right there. Now, I know I'm not saying electric car is going to save the planet or green or anything like that. I know that oil still produces much of the electricity, but it's being produced in a factory where it's as efficient as possible. And that electric car right there going by you is not emitting carbon dioxide or smoke or diesel fumes right there. And it's also quieter. An electric car is extremely quiet as opposed to a combustion car. You know, the car that I'm thinking of that <laughs> there's you got your gl green electric car that is quiet and uh, doesn't emit any kind of fumes from it as opposed to the diesel truck rolling smoke. <laughs> you know, he's just brrr, puts out black smoke everywhere. makes a huge racket and wherever it goes, that'll go away. And yeah, it's fun to drive a truck that makes a lot of noise. I get that, but it's a burden to everybody else around you. And so that will go away and the roads and places will be cleaner. The final thing is culture will change. Today, our cars define us. Like as I started talking about the diesel truck rolling smoke, you already envisioned who that person is that drives that vehicle, right? Or if I said a cyber truck, or if I said a Prius, a Subaru, whatever. If I start talking about a car, you start putting a picture of a person who drives that car in your mind. Because that's who we are as Americans. The, the car that we drive is our identity. If I drive a Ferrari versus a Harley Davidson versus a Ford pickup truck versus a Tesla versus whatever, it doesn't really matter. These are things that who we are because we, we spend a lot of money to buy them and we spend a lot of money to park them and maintain them. But in the future, it won't be part of that. A car will become more like public transportation. Think about it today. If you order an Uber, you may not like that a Prius comes to pick you up, but you decided you wanted to save money. You want to buy an XL vehicle. So a Prius comes and gets you. Okay. You don't care. I mean, you might squeeze in there and think next time I'm going to order a bigger car, but it's not an identity of who you are as a person. Getting into that Prius and getting out of that Prius is not a defining person. It's not, it's not who your character or who you are, where it is today. So I think our culture is really going to change. Now, that leads me to the point why I don't think this will happen. Now, what I've described to you might sound utopian, dystopian. You might agree or disagree. I don't know. The one reason why I think none of this will happen is COVID. That's, that's the thing that I kind of keep going back to. Yeah, our culture of we want to own our cars and race them or whatever else, that might still exist or whatever. But the COVID virus, do you remember 2020, how crazy it was? It seems like a... I have like a fog, a brain fog about that whole time period. But the one thing that sticks out to me is that government shut things down. They were like, you can't go to the gym. You can't go to church or whatever. You, everybody has to work from home or you have wear masks everywhere. I mean, government came out with all these mandates. And the one thing I think about when it comes to autonomous cars is if they're all, whether they're privately owned or they're publicly owned or whatever, or the government owns them or manage them, they'll be connected to a network of control. And the government could just say, there's a COVID virus, COVID 2025 or whatever, flip a switch, and then no transportation. And that couldn't happen in 2020, or it couldn't happen today, because we have our cars, I could just get in my car, I don't think the government has the ability to basically block the streets and prevent us from even driving. Even if it did, I don't think Americans would tolerate that. But we would have no choice if the government, if we didn't drive our own cars, if we only rented our cars when we needed them at that moment in time, it'll go away. And I think mobility, we think about the First Amendment or the Second Amendment of the US Constitution, the Bill of Rights. But I think there's like another amendment. I don't know, maybe there is. But freedom of transportation, freedom of movement, it's like that's what makes it great having a car. And you don't have to wait for a train or a bus to take you anywhere. You don't have to, um, you know, schedule your trip around a flight. If you want to get in a car and drive from New York to California, you can do that. But you can't do that in a world where all the cars are autonomous. So there could be this 
utopian future of safe, clean, cheap, reliable transportation. And that whole culture of owning a car goes away in terms of like status symbols and all that kind of stuff only to like lose our freedom. That that's where I sit on that. Where, where do you sit on it? Did I, did, it, does the future sound dystopian or utopian to you in a world where you don't own a car and a car no longer becomes this big burden in your life or defining moment of or person of who you are? A car now becomes just, eh, I just get in a car and go. Does somebody just dial up a car and it goes, does that sound great or not great to you? Yeah, I've just been thinking a lot about that and I'm going to continue to think about it, especially in me as an Uber driver about to lose my job <laughs> to autonomous cars. So as that, as the world changes, I think we should talk about it more. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. As you know, I like to engage in the comments. If you are an Uber driver, please go out there and use some of the, uh, in fact, you don't have to be an Uber driver. I have two really great sponsors right now, Lace Fit Mats and Red Tiger cameras. Please check them both out. Click on the links in the video. That would be great and helpful to, uh, to the sponsors and let them know that you watch these videos. If you want, I would really appreciate you joining the Thrive membership here on this uh, YouTube channel. By joining Thrive, it costs three bucks a month, but it helps me focus my content because the Thrive members are who I pay attention to and listen to. They're the ones that are like make content about this and they're the comments that I first go to read. So if that matters a lot to you, I would appreciate it. If you want to join a community of other Uber drivers and Lyft drivers, uh, join the Facebook group. It's a great group of drivers and drivers only. And uh, it's a lot of fun. So to my fellow drivers, I want you to know that I am cheering for you. Please be well, be safe, and uh, be well. <laughs>